the main idea behind the uh, uh, EA DAS regulation is a conformity assessment mechanism that gives you trust to, to the devices, software and organization who will provide you uh, trust services and it's crucial to understand how conformity assessment is working and this common approach uh, uh, is used in other um, spheres like agriculture, healthcare, so it's universal approach when you have on the left side uh, international, European, local standards. On the right side you have products or services uh, and you need to prove that your products and services uh, comply to the international standards requirements and this uh, compliance will be done by conformity assessment bodies. So conformity assessment bodies, it's a infrastructure within each country, uh, but for example, in Ukraine and European Union, we have a union of uh, regulators on top of conformity assessment bodies and the name for them is European Association for Accreditation because this assessment bodies must be uh, go through the qualification procedure by the government body <laughs> this why this complex rather procedure give us ability to prove that trust service provider in our case uh, comply with international and European standards to do so, these trust service providers, according to YEDA's regulation, must order uh, on, her, on his own uh, and pay for the conformity assessment of their services and procedures and, and products uh, that they will use to provide trust services, in our case, uh, e-signature e-seals. And uh, after successful conformity assessment, uh, the body will give us re uh, to the trust service provider the report and this report will be then passed to the supervisor body in Ukraine. Uh, right now it's a Ministry of Digitalization uh, who gives a qualification to trust service providers and their services because it's also uh, crucial to understand that uh, different trust service providers can provide different trans trust services. And the same schema will be used for the qualification of signature creation device. It's a device that you will use to create a digital signature or digital ECL. E and next step to the regulation. So uh, electronic signature, <laughs> there is even not a single definition of the term uh, e-signature, advanced electronic signature, it's an article because advanced electronic signature has a couple of um, uh, properties that must be uh, filled to, to be advanced electronic signature. The idea behind this is that we can link this electronic signature to the signatory. So as I told you, the signature gives a authenticity uh, to their end users, so we know who uh, made this signature. The next step is the capability of identifying the signatory. I already talked talk about this. And the next step that creating using electronic signature da data uh, will be under sole control. And this sole control is the main idea behind the standardization of secure signature creation device. Uh, in Ukraine, right now, we have a huge issue with this sole control because uh, historically we began to use uh, simple fresh flash drives and simple files um, as the uh, careers for private keys for e-signatures and e-seals and when it's a simple file with a password you can simply copy this file and then make some fraud or, or cannot uh, uh, fulfill sole control requirement of advanced electronic signature and on other hand, uh, secure signature devices, um, it's a hardware that guarantee that there is no possibility to extract private key from the, this hardware because 
the private key will be generated on this hardware and uh, no one cannot uh, copy it from it. But even in this case, uh, not uh, dif uh, uh, different hardwares have the equal level of security. And uh, uh, the first, last one, property of advanced electronic signature, that this uh, uh, signature will give you a property of integrity. So if the data will be changed after, after the signature will be applied to this data, this uh, change will be detectable. And it's a regulation uh, and it's, it's a crucial part of the signature and trust to the end documents. And to fulfill this uh, definition of advanced electronic signature, uh, the Commission made uh, three different implementing decisions. Uh, in Ukraine, this implementing decision partly was implemented as the uh, acts of Cabinet of Ministries of Ukraine. First one, uh, uh, we will talk about European and international standards for security uh, creation, uh, security signature creation devices. Uh, and uh, the second one, we will talk also about uh, uh, formats uh, about for the trust list. Uh, as you remember from the first webinar, the trust list is a registry of qualified trust service providers. And this qualification was made by the government so you can trust to these trust service providers. And also trust list is the machine readable data that can be used to the cross border in cross border uh, transactions and uh, European Commission have <coughs> has a trust list of trust lists <laughs> that uh, joins all trust lists of the member states and uh, further I will talk about uh, this approach and idea that Eastern partnership countries also can create a trust list of trust list to make a cross-border transaction possible between our countries. And last one implementing decision uh, related to the formats of the advanced electronic signature on the previous webinar we already told about uh, PDF signatures, uh, ASIC, ZIP signatures, XML signature and all this stuff and uh, also we will talk about these formats today. So starting from the uh, qualified electronic signature creation devices, a European implementation decision explicitly states that uh, secure signature creation device in the end must comply with European standard N 1419 211. Uh, and this standard is based on uh, the international standard for, for common criteria called and uh, this standard compliance to the this standard uh, is ba uh, the procedure to, to comply to the standard is based on other international standard on security techniques methodology for IT security evaluation and the good thing about this that uh, uh, there is already a lot of European uh, conformity assessment body bodies and uh, products that comply to these standards and idea that we try to implement in Ukraine not to create local body because it will be too expensive and too long for us to create but become a members of common criteria community on, on the screenshot you can see that uh, the common criteria community it's um, a community that has a, a conformity assessment body who can conduct the conformity assessment and consuming members it's a countries who do not have uh, conformity assessment bodies but who recognize the conformity assessment from other countries so idea not to uh, build very complex and uh, pricey uh, infrastructure for conformity assessment but become a, a player in their community uh, of, for these uh, signature creation devices and unfortunately for example in Ukraine we have only two 
suppliers for the local uh, hardware uh, security models that have rather poor support on different platforms and different uh, operating systems. This is why using more widely uh, usable devices will help building trust and uh, digital markets inside our countries. The next uh, step is a trust list and here I will show you what is it. Uh, so trust list is a list of uh, all countries that have uh, ability to drill down into their existing trust service providers. So this trust list is built on the list of trust lists uh, in European Commission and here we have we see that uh, trust list for Germany have a lot of trust service providers. For example, Deutsche Post have uh, two trust services. It's uh, qualified certificates for electronic signature and uh, qualified re registered delivery service. So for example, Deutsche Post do not have timestamp or e-seal trust services. And idea behind this list of trust list is to check whether your trust service provider was qualified by uh, your government body or not and another part to understand and search which services your provider can provide and the idea behind this list of trust lists is to build an analog for Eastern Partnership uh, and use this repository with uh, national uh, trust list to be able to cross validate digital signatures and digital uh, um, seals uh, between our countries in cross-border uh, transactions. Uh, next is e-signature standards. Uh, there is uh, four of them, but <laughs> it's much less. I will start uh, and these uh, standards uh, it's uh, Yeti European standards and behind this abbreviation is a concrete st Yeti standards and these standards uh, are uh, uh, aligned in the commission decision 1506 so uh, you can check the detailed numbers but I would like to talk about ideas behind <coughs> And this standard. So the first standard is XML advanced electronic signature. These signatures mainly used in their uh, LibreOffice and Microsoft Office uh, products uh, that uh, is uh, that try to be not binary uh, signatures but text readable. The next signatures is a binary signature that mainly used in their uh, compact devices and difference, uh, the main difference is a text format, binary format. The next one, PADES, it's a specific um, case of the CADES KMS Advanced Electronic Signature that uh, embedded into the, the PDF. Uh, the good news is that uh, PADES signatures became an international standard uh, and uh, when you can place a signature into the PDF you can use extended PDF advanced electronic signatures according to uh, European standards. And uh, last, the last one is the ASIC associated signature container it's uh, in fact not a first type of the signatures, it's a container that gives you ability not uh, to bind the document or documents, for example, hundreds of PDFs or different uh, attachments uh, with uh, thousands of signatures or so dozens of signatures in different formats in CADES, XADES. Uh, for example, the use case for the ASIC may be a cross-border uh, contract between Estonia and Ukraine, for example, Estonia or Georgia, when, uh, where Estonia uses Exodus format as default in the government bodies um, and Ukraine uh, is using currently CADES. So in ASIC format you will have a zip format with your PDF contract uh, with Exodus signature from Estonian counterparty and CADES signature from the Georgian counterparty. 
and <laughs> the the validation of the signature will will work in the compliant um, uh, implementation and self building block the signature building block will will do the validation of the signatures more deeply in the signatures whatever type of signature you will take you will have four levels of signatures uh, from the lowest one to the highest one but the idea it's not a, a, a protection integrity or authenticity all, all the levels have the default uh, uh, defined by regulation level of quality for the integrity and authenticity uh, the idea of the levels is the data that you need to carry in the, the signature to be able to verify the, the signature later on in the five ten years period because you as you know you must change every two years signature uh, digital signature private key uh, for the sake of the security and because your old private key will uh, revoke uh, you need to have a mechanism to validate rather old uh, digital signatures and the levels of signatures will give you ability so the basic level do not have any data about your current um, revocation die data for the private key the second one BT it's a base basic type with timestamp when you have a trusted timestamp to their uh, signature because uh, as I mentioned uh, by default if you do not use a timestamp trust service from your trust service provider the si signing uh, software will use your local time on the computer and you can set this local time to whatever you want and this why um, uh, this local time on your computer is not trusted by default this why uh, trust service uh, timestamp will give you a trusted time for the signing of the document the next step is a lt long term validation this uh, uh, level of the signature will include all the data needed for the five to ten years uh, validity of your signature so even uh, after um, revocation of your private key for your signature long term uh, type of the signature will give you ability to validate your revoked private key for, uh, revoked CE signature for the five to ten years and last one LTA long term archived mainly maybe be, will be used by the government bodies um, that need to store the data longer than 10 years uh, 50 75 years and here you will apply archive timestamp and we will talk about this use case on e-archive self building blocks so mainly for the business and uh, government to customer use cases you will use lt and good thing about all these levels is that you can uh, extend your basic signature from the lowest level to the highest after the signature creation it's not a problem and here i will only show without details the procedure for the validation of the uh, digital signature that is a rather complex procedure that uh, fully defined in yetian 1319-102 uh, and uh, this uh, procedure is fully implemented in uh, safe e-signature e building block so you don't need to implement it but it's a crucial block uh, because right now for example in Ukraine there is a um, need for certification of each cryptographic mo module who will uh, create a digital signature which limits uh, the innovation in this field for example i will show you right now how to sign uh, a document with libreoffice and uh, firefox uh, but these modules in the libreoffice and firefox is not uh, certified by ukrainian government bodies this why in theory i cannot use it but when we will not uh, certify, uh, certify calculat calculators as I told and when we will certify the result of the signature so this validation service can validate the signature and if the procedure of the validation will be total valid then we do not care about the certification of the uh, 
cryptographic library that was used to create the C signature. The C signature was created you, uh, uh, according to the standards. It passed the certified service for the validation and the signature must be created with a signature creation device and uh, um, uh, responsibility to make this mark for the usage of the secure signature creation device will be on the trust service provider who will uh, give a certificate to the end users. So right now we will go to the interesting part demos and uh, I would like you to show that I will use a smart card, a simple smart card this smart card uh, will uh, be uh, is based on the card OS uh, certified uh, operation system. It's an uh, operation system certified by Deutsche Conformity Assessment Body at the YAL4 level, and it's a fully uh, conformant to European standards for the security. Uh, of the security creation devices. So, idea behind uh, their uh, signing LibreOffice that we have a document that you can create. Uh, we need to save this document before signing because uh, after signing we cannot change this document and go to the digital signature the, uh, player sign document this sign document asked me to uh, enter pin code to the my um, smart card uh, after accessing the smart card, I can check, check I can select a um, certificate that I would like to use. It's a fake certificate that I uh, took from their uh, self building block or testing device, uh, oh, so, um, uh, testing suit, and close. After close, we have the signatures on their. Uh, simple LibreOffice document and if I will add something uh, uh, but the document has modified so we have ability to identify the ability or the integrity of the document and it's already built in in the LibreOffice I will not save my document uh, because we need to verify the signature so right now we created this document in 1026 I will use um, European uh, Commission validation uh, software. It's a self building block that they host on their own hosting that we use test free block. And here it is. We have inter intermediate status because I used a fake certificate uh, and it was not trusted, for example. But if the certificate was issued by the authority that is uh, placed in the trust list <coughs> of European Union, this certificate, uh, this validation process will be totally passed, uh, and you can use the LibreOffice out the box uh, to sign the document without fancy. Um, uh, software and another demo I would like to show you how to extend uh, the digital signature uh, I'm talking about these different levels of a uh, signature BB, BT, BLT and others so to you, ah, uh, one more thing uh, colleagues, sorry, I was also would like to show you, I have less time but I would like you to show you a, a how to use a mobile ID as a montage uh, file if you key top uh, before going further so right now we have ability to sign a document word document with uh, a mobile ID in Ukraine. So this mobile ID is based on Gmalto software 
and uh, I would like to show that it's rather easy to do so. So here we have a document, a mobile phone and a web uh, uh, site that was integrated with our Kyivstar mobile operator. Mm, to use the mobile ID we need to log in with our mobile phone. Under this login we have a bind mobile phone number and also we have a validation code 5615 that will go to, to your m phone when uh, you will sign the document with mobile ID. And after this uh, we need to drag and drop the document that we would like to sign to their area uh, with documents. Let's wait and we will press the sign button. After this the document will, uh, the hash of this document will be calculated and uh, it will be sent to the Kivstar provider and here it is. We have a notification on the mobile phone with verification number that match our website. We press OK. Here we can enter the PIN code to their <coughs> digital signature on the SIM card and uh, after a while we have a signed document in the zip format it's a, our CADES format is it the same so mm, back to their our extension so it was a mobile signature uh, extension of their mm, signature is rather simple it's an extension of the signature we can uh, we can select uh, early signed and the, on the first webinar web uh, file uh, with the B basic uh, type, we can say that it's an AC card S and we would like to extend it to the T with timestamp. Here we have a, a warning that uh, the demo website is using dummy timestamp and after uh, extension we have a file with a T uh, extended uh, level so and then we can extend to LT or LTA to check that it was T we can use the same software to check this extended file and here we, we have CADES baseline T file so this was a main presentation for me dear colleagues if you have